Specifically, what we need to do in this um, first video is just to analyze the need for monitoring the environment. So why should we be monitoring the environment? Well, there's a number of important reasons why we would do that. And of course, this relates to both a particular chemical process as well as wider issues around the um, local <clears throat> and global implications of chemical processes. So what are some of the reasons why this might be a, a good or a bad thing? Well, I think, of course, the first thing is that um, the monitoring may re reveal uh, an issue of too many. One of the things that we notice is that for a process like combustion, which is such a common process, the process of combustion is actually dependent on the reactants. Specifically, combustion reactions are um, directly related to the concentration of oxygen that's available uh, when a fuel is uh, undergoing combustion. So this concentration of oxygen leads us to either incomplete or complete combustion. And of course, once we've had a look at um, those two processes, we know that there is going to be a difference in either the um, particulate buildup or the buildup of a greenhouse gas. In both cases, water is a product, but in the case of incomplete combustion, we can have uh, carbon being released as a product in the form of soot, or we can have carbon monoxide, which is quite a dangerous gas being released. However, if the concentration of oxygen is high, um, or we change the nature of the fuel, then we get, or are more likely to get, complete combustion. And that's going to produce water, but it's also going to produce carbon dioxide. Now, even then, in a more desired um, product, we can still have a problem of buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We now know there are links between this and other important um, uh, greenhouse gases that contribute to a real problem at the, um, at the moment around global warming. And so there are consequences for too much of this sort of thing being released into the um, environment. We can also have issues of too few. One of the things that we did when we went to the Sydney water treatment is we, we had a look at hard versus soft water. What we realized is that hard water is characterized by the presence of calcium and magnesium ions. Now we don't want a lot of these ions because if there are too many of them, then the water is very hard. It can um, uh, lead to precipitation in the piping. It can also um, mean that it's very hard to lather. However, if the concentration of these is too low, then we can also find that there can be some uh, erosion, that actually some of the water can actually start to eat away at the, um, uh, at the piping. And so therefore, sometimes part of the process of water purification is around the addition of calcium ions in order to raise that concentration of calcium and reduce um, the prospects of damage being done at some uh, point further down the line. So there's problems occasionally with too much and there's problems also with too few.